Hey there, welcome in. This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use the auto splitter. The auto splitter that I will use has been made by Tufool and you can download it on this GitHub link that I will put in the description. The other thing that I'm going to be using uh, in order to parameter the auto splitter and especially in the case of Ocarina of Time is going to be uh, paint.net so you can get this for free on their website i will include the link and you want to click on this which will give you a zip with paint.net all right so uh once you're done downloading the latest uh, of the auto splitter uh, then you will have this kind of a folder uh, so you will have the auto splitter dot uh, exe and then you will have your settings. So settings is what we're going to be doing next. If you start the auto splitter, it's going to look like this. And the first thing that it asks you is for a path to a folder. So basically, this is going to be usually you have one folder per category. And then you indicate the folder that it has to fetch the images from because the auto splitter uh, does comparison between two images. So the first thing we do is that we do a new folder and we indicate this new folder uh, in there. So it's going to be just here, demo. All right, now the next thing you want to do is you want to capture your game feed and show it to the auto splitter. And you want to show it always the same size, same ratio. You want something really consistent. So I'm going to share uh, the trick that I use is, uh, so here's uh, the left side of my OBS and uh, I'm going to show a little more. And if I click here on the OSSC source, so this is going to pop the game feed on. So this is my game capture and I can move it uh, whichever size I want. But what I can do is right click and then window projector uh, parenthesis source. You should find that in your own language, I suppose. And this will pop. Uh, this small screen and it will pop it always the same size and very consistent so what I do is that I indicate to the auto splitter to go fetch the image from this window and recently they added that you can directly select a window so I'm going to select this window and now uh, the auto splitter can detect if uh, I move in the game and it knows the game so the next thing that we want to do is create our first splits i'm going to show three examples from uh this the very simpler the first example that i want to show is that i'm going to pick up an item and i would like the auto splitter to split as soon as the item appears in the text box so it's not yet and here it just appeared so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause the game at this moment uh, i'm going to take it away for you guys and i'm going to ask the auto splitter to take a screenshot so it's going to take a screenshot and it's going to place it inside the folder uh, that we just created and indicated to the auto splitter now the next thing we want to do is we want to open paint.net and we want to give it the image that we just had and we go open and paint.net what we're going to be doing is very easy you don't need uh, a lot so zooming is con control and then the mouse wheel uh, that's a that's a useful one and i think if you click on the mouse wheel you know the middle stuff then you can grab the image and so it works the way you want. So we're going to be focusing on this little icon that just popped and what we want to do is detour it basically and that's where paint.net is really strong. Uh, so the way I usually do it is I draw a square around it and then I press Control I which inverts the selection and I delete everything that was not the square. Now the next thing I do is I take this little uh, magic wand and I click on something very uniform. So it's going to be the outside of this. 
Now, it didn't quite well understood what I wanted to do, so I'm going to go to the tolerance bar, and this is where it gets really handy. And I'm going to drag the tolerance up to a level that I feel, you know, the image is going to be consistent and it's going to be fine. So I have the feeling that this is good. So now I'm going to uh, delete the rest and uh, I'm going to save this as my first split image. And here we arrive uh, to something very important for the way that the auto splitter works is how you name things. Uh, so basically the name of the file will give some information to the auto splitter and those information will be at the very end. So the way it works, it start with 001, so this is going to put it in first position. I think having three numbers is really handy to make the order. Another advice is place an A before every split. So uh, when you realize that you've done 50 splits and you want to add one in between, then you can use A, B, C, D. Uh, and stuff like this, so it gets really handy. Then whichever name, I'm going to leave it to split image. And now we arrive to more interesting things. So stuff that we could parameter uh, through the auto splitter. So you see on the auto splitter, there's X, Y, width, height. So I haven't used that because I selected the window. So I can go to the next parameter. FPS limit is going to be 60. This is what my capture is getting. Um, and then I like to show life similarity and highest similarity default similarity threshold. This is really not important. I have it at 90, but I will show you. This is the first thing we're going to do is on the title. We're going to put between parentheses. And then for this one, I'm going to choose 0 0.98 and close the parentheses. This means I want the auto splitter to trigger when it realizes that there is more than 98% of similarity between the image I'm saving right now, which is just the hover boots and nothing else, and the actual game feed. So this is how I indicate this. So I'm going to save that. And this would be uh, the first example of making a split. So now your auto splitter is going to be triggering whichever hotkey you gave it in here. And if I put the game back on and open the chest, start the auto splitter, the image is here trying to be recognized and timer is down right. All right, let's see another example, which is going to be, I'm trying to enter the water temple, which is just underneath. And the thing that happens when I enter the water temple is the screen fades to black completely and I would like to use that but there's tons of them in the game so I need something to help the auto splitter be more precise about which one and what I'm going to be using uh, in this case could be the area text that is right here so I'm going to be taking a screenshot uh, for the area text and then I'm going to go to the start and frame by frame I'm going to aim for the one that has absolutely nothing on it then I'm going to go to my watches turn them off uh, going to settings I'm going to turn off the input display and the pause display so that here I have a completely dark screen and I'm going to take a screenshot of that there we go. So we have our two next splits with uh, the captures. We don't need to do anything uh, with the one that is uh, just a fully dark image. So we can start renaming this one uh, right now. And we're going to call it two uh, split image. It doesn't matter too much. And we're going to give it 95% of similarity before it triggers. So this is going to be our split. Um, this one, we're going to put it in paint. And we would like to 
get the area text uh, that is right here and it's not going to be very handy with those very light spots but oh well okay so usual technique we draw a rectangle we draw a rectangle reverse it uh, delete what's around it and then take the magic wand and click on the color that we want so uh, if I only click on one piece of the lettering then it only gets this one if I click on shift uh, and click on the pieces of the lettering then it takes more but I'm having the problem of these very bright uh, bulbs right here so I'm thinking I might go for uh, the darker surrounding of the lettering so let's see if I can adjust the similarity threshold to select this for me this looks pretty good um, so I need to reverse that take it away uh, this looks nice I'm going to just remove that little bit because it looks out of place and uh, we're going to save this as our next split so um, this is going to be 001 a split image uh, going to ask 95 similarity is just fine and as you can see here there was some spoilers but we're going to put squiggly brackets D D as dummy and close the squiggly bracket and what's this going to do is it should tell the auto splitter that this is an image he has to wait for but to not activate the split shortcut with it so that it's not going to split on your live split but the auto splitter will wait to find this image before activating so this is the dummy split it's very important uh, and used wisely it's super good okay so let's save this here now we're going to go around there and delete that other image i'm going to delete the very first example so now we only have this as a dummy and then this as a split and uh, we can try to start the auto splitter bring back the game okay so the auto splitter is now trying to uh, detect the first letter but it should not take it into consideration double checking the squiggly brackets that uh, because it's a dummy so uh, let's go it takes this into account did not split so you can see my life split did not activate but it's now looking for a completely dark screen and it triggered the split exactly when I entered uh, the water temple so this is what we wanted and this is the end of the second example the third example is going to be about the way that speedrunning is now timed in ocarina of time and the way it works is that the timer starts on first frame of movement from link if you don't do anything uh, you have 10 seconds but if you don't do anything then the timer doesn't start yet so how do we want to uh, parameter the auto splitter so that it understands that we're starting a run and that it understands that um, it's as soon as Link moves and not on any other something. So it's going to be a little tricky. This is why it's the third example, but uh, this is the way that um, we've been doing it and that someone showed me how to do that. So I'm going to take a screenshot from here. And basically what I want from here is uh, the little text that is flashing because this is only present when you click on a file. So if the auto splitter recognize that, then you're going to give it the info like, okay, this is title screen, something's gonna happen, okay? And the something is going to be uh, the next fade to black, which happens as soon as you select uh, this. So I'm going to choose uh, one of those frames, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to take my first screenshot here and then um, if I select, then it's going to go fade to black. I could take a screenshot fade to black, but I have one already, which is really handy. Uh, black and white full screens, uh, something that you can copy and paste. So I'll copy paste that one, so no need. And then I arrive here. And here, 
I'm going to take the case uh, that is mine, which is uh, I would like to press C up first. And then when, once link settles, I want to start moving later on. So I'm going to be taking links shadow. Uh, so I'm going to grab the screenshot right here. And uh, this is it for the captures that I needed. So first thing we need to do is very quickly go detour the start. So I'm going to take uh, even closer. I'm going to take just really this square. Okay, reverse this and save. I'm going to call it uh, one split image. Gonna give it zero point. Uh, you don't want to give it much because since it's flashing, the light is going on and off. So I'm going to give it 85. Like this is really low 85. Don't give 85 to anything. And then I'm going to say that it's not something you should split on. So I'm going to put the D. Okay. So I have this saved and now I can move on to the more interesting part. So the more interesting part is what we're going to do with Link's shadow. So I want to grab Link's shadow, uh, all of this from here. So as always, I start detouring very roughly the part that we want to work on. And now we want Link's shadow, but uh, we need to be careful that his hand might move and stuff like that. But we still want to detour the shadow first and we won't we're going to take like a generous triangle like this. Reverse it, delete the rest. And now just as precaution, I'm going to remove tiny bits here and here in case of hand movement from Link. But honestly, you should be fast enough so that it doesn't happen and do it. All right. Now we save this and we're going to be saving this as split image uh, three actually because it's after the black screen. And we're going to ask 90, 90% similarity because the way that it's going to work is that we're going to use the B. And what B does here is that it's going to recognize the image and it's not going to split there. It's going to wait for the threshold of recognition, you know, the similarity to drop under what you specified. So in our case, it's going to be 90%. And when it drops under 90%, it's going to split. And this is what is going to make that um, as soon as we move link, anywhere then it's going to not recognize anymore it's going to drop below 90 like way way below 90 and it's going to start the timer so that's the way that we're going to be handling things um, i don't think we need to reshow uh, how all of that happens i have noticed that uh, one second of default pause time is nice. All right, this is going to be the end, but uh, if you want to see more examples of how splits are made, named, and what image are taken for which split, what kind of techniques, then I will put a Google Doc link in the description with a folder that has all of the images that I use for uh, speed running 100%. So it's a lot of splits. There's lots of images, lots of instances of this and that, so that you can see the little techniques that uh, I've been using uh, to go around. Don't forget to ask also friends and colleagues from the same category or speed run. And uh, big thanks to Tufu for making such a useful piece of software. All right. Have fun, guys, with the auto splitter. See you next time.